So there are a few basic parts to this basic jack. And so we'll just kind of run through those. This is the foot. It swivels. This is the nose. It's cast steel and this is what supports the load. This whole mechanism here is the running gear and it's primarily the reversing lever and two climbing pins. This is the handle that operates the climbing pins. It has a safety shear that's built into it so if you're exceeding the capacity of the jack you'll get a shear action here which will disable or stop what you're doing before the climbing pins break. They climb up the bar or the shaft and then there's a little ear up here at the top that has various applications. But the only part you have to worry about in making this thing do what you want it to do is operating this reversing lever. It's as simple as this. If it's in the up position, the jack is going to go up. If it's in the down position, the jack is going to go down, either under a load or without. For instance, if it's in the up position, it slides freely up and will hold itself in position. If it's in the down position, it slides freely down. This whole running mechanism, including the reversing lever, has to be lubricated. One of the biggest sources of frustration in operating one of these jacks is when they get rusty and sticky and they're not operating smoothly. The jack just doesn't work. So don't be afraid to oil it. The way I like to do it, raise that reversing lever, bring it over to where you want to do the work, and slide it up. You're ready to go now. Get the bar as plumb as you can, side to side, and keeping a firm grip, let me repeat that, keeping a firm grip on the handle, and in most cases, two hands on the handle, push it down until the lifting pin engages. You can hear the click. Come back up, two hands on the handle if you can. Now as that foot squishes into the soil, the top of the bar rolls over against the load, Click. The elephant in the living room with these jacks is the danger associated with this handle when you have a big load on that nose. What I mean by that is when I'm pushing down like this and I have all of that load focused on that leverage point, if this slipped out of my hands, that handle is coming back up at an alarming rate of speed. And if I was fully at the bottom and it slipped out of my grip, so pay attention. One of the characteristics of these jacks is that they're not lifting straight up under the load like a bottle jack. They are on the side of the load. And the further up the bar you get, the more squirrely any load becomes. When I was 20 and I was running my sawmill and I was leveling up that sawmill with these things, it was really squirrely when you had an 8,000 pound machine three feet up in the air. And so these things weigh 8,000 pounds. The rating of the jack is 7,000 pounds. So in theory, I should be able to lift this right up, right? But in practice, it begins to slide sideways because I'm not coming straight up under the load. And also in practice, the soil won't support it. And so you get this shifting, sliding moment, which is part of the confusion and frankly the risk associated with using these is that straight up is a bit of a problem. So having said all that, the reason they're so versatile is because they can be put in such a wide range of positions. They can jack horizontally, they can jack, jack at an angle, they can, they can spread a great distance, they can be used in tandem. They're just, they're just an awesome, awesome machine and in fact, they will function as a come along or a winch. Watch this. You keep hearing me talk about the versatility and the utility of this jack. This is really what I'm speaking to because as useful as a bottle jack is, it does not act as a hoist or a winch. But this thing will. If you've got a couple of shackles, if you've got a couple of chains, and you need to pull something, it's exactly the same process you're thinking of. You put the reversing lever in the lifting position, you hang a shackle and a chain off the nose. There's a hole right there to accept that. There is, when they're new, a clamp or a bracket that goes on the top so you have a penetration for um, getting a hold of at the top of the bar. And now by operating this thing, boy, this is really a chance to get swatted by the bar. You can pull two things together in exactly the same way that a come along would do it. Look at that. I've never had to do this in the wild, but I've always wondered about it. Oh yeah. You can put thousands of pounds of pull in a very controllable and incremental way 
just like that. Two hands on the handle, reversing lever in the down position. Keep a hold of this bad boy. Bring it back and the pressure goes off. So clearly this is not a come along. It's not as handy as a come along for pulling, but it'll work as a come along. You maybe checked out our video on come alongs. We've got a link to the video and to the come along actually in the notes. We've also got a link to this lovely device in the notes so you can you know, get one of these if you think you're ready to use one. There's a lot of things you can do with these. There are a lot of things that you might have to do someday. And so if you've got room on the truck, if you've got room in the shop, if you find one of these things on sale somewhere, or even if it's not on sale, you'll never be sorry that you've got one in your toolbox. Mm -hmm.